The H-1B guy here, and today the H-1B guy examines the history of premium processing, one of USCIS's primary revenue sources. But before we get started, I'd like to ask you, if you haven't already, to please subscribe to the H-1B Guy channel here on YouTube. It helps me to produce more content like this for you. I also wanted to mention the H-1B Guy offers a variety of consulting services. If I can provide you peace of mind by helping you bridge the gap between your employer and your immigration attorney, please reach out. I'd love to hear how I can help you. Back on October 16, 2020, USCIS published a news release announcing increases to the premium processing fees. I wanted to discuss this here today because I've covered premium processing a handful of times here on this channel, so I wanted to dive in and examine its history. Let's start out with answering this question. What is premium processing? The answer to this question is taken directly from USCIS.gov. How do I request premium processing? Quote, premium processing provides expedited processing for Form I-120 Petition for Non-Immigrant Worker and Form I-140 Immigrant Petition for Alien Worker. Specifically, we guarantee processing within 15 calendar days to those who choose to use this service or we will refund the premium processing service fee and will continue with expedited processing. Wanted to mention this includes filings for H-1B, L-1s, TNs, I-140 for employment-based visas, but it's not just limited to these visas, although these are the primary visa types that I cover here on this channel. Back on December 8th of 2004, signed by President George W. Bush, the Consolidated Appropriations Act 2005, known as the Omnibus Appropriations Act of 2005, included the H-1B Reform Act of 2004 in Title IX. This act created premium processing as an option for additional $1,000 filing fee. For almost six years, the $1,000 premium processing fee remained until a final rule from September 24th of 2010 was published, which increased premium processing from $1,000 to $1,225. $1,225 remained as the fee for the premium processing filing until a final rule from August 31st of 2018 was published, which increased premium processing from $1,225 to $1,410, which leads us to the Continuing Appropriations Act 2021 and Other Extensions Act that was signed into law October 1st of 2020. This included the, quote, Title I Emergency Stopgap, USCIS Stabilization Act. This title expands Department of Homeland Security, DHS authority to provide premium processing services for certain immigration-related petitions and applications and contains other related provisions. DHS may collect the fee to provide premium processing of an application for any immigration benefit that DHS considers appropriate, subject to certain requirements. Certainly, or excuse me, currently, DHS only has statutory authority to provide premium processing for employment-based petitions and applications. Under current law, DHS must use such premium processing fees to provide premium processing services and make infrastructure improvements. Under this title, such fees shall be used for these purposes and other activities that offset the cost of providing adjudication and naturalization services. DHS may suspend premium processing only if circumstances prevent the timely processing of a significant number of the petitions or applications. DHS shall provide those who have requested premium processing with access to case status information and communications channels to the premium processing units. DHS may expand premium processing to certain immigrant benefits and set fees for such processing without following certain rulemaking procedures if DHS meets certain requirements, such as limiting the premium fee to specified amounts. The title also increases the fees charged for premium processing. DHS may, subject to requirements, biannually adjust premium fees to reflect inflation without following certain rulemaking requirements.
DHS shall report to Congress a five-year plan to improve processing times for all immigration and naturalization benefit requests and to implement electronic-based communications, payment acceptance, and filing procedures for such requests. Which finally brings us all the way back to our opening statement where we mentioned the news release on USCIS.gov titled Premium Processing Fee Increased Effective October 19, 2020. Quote, U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services, USCIS, today announced it will increase fees for premium processing effective October 19th as required by the Continuing Appropriations Act of 2021 and other Extensions Act signed into law on October 1st. The act included the Emergency Stop Get USCIS Stabilization Act, which requires USCIS to establish and collect additional premium processing fees and to use those additional funds for expanded purposes. Increases the fees for Form I-907 request for premium processing from $1,440 to 2500 for all filings. Any form I-907 postmarked on or after October 19th must include the new fee amount. Publication L number 116-159 also gives USCIS the ability to expand premium processing to additional forms and benefit requests, but USCIS is not yet taking that action. Any expansion of premium processing to other forms will be implemented as provided in the legislation. So there it is. To avoid solving USCIS's budget deficits that have been widely covered and as we've discussed on this channel multiple times, the plan is to increase premium processing fee for pretty much every non-immigrant filing and premium processing by over $1,000. Coupled with the H-1B IFR limiting H-1Bs working at third-party work sites to 12-month extension and the thousands of EB-2-based individuals who are now downgrading to EB-3 and filing their new I-140 and premium processing creates an instant boost of cash flow for USCIS. The other point I wanted to make about premium processing is that it is at the discretion of the beneficiary as to whether your case is filed in premium processing or not. The petitioner can legally pass the fees associated with premium processing down to the beneficiary. Not all employers will do this, but a lot will. Please understand that you can request to have premium processing filed on your behalf as long as you are willing to pay for it. It will be interesting to see if and when USCIS will open up premium processing to employment authorization filings. This would include visas, filings such as H4EAD, L2EAD, and others. For now, enjoy premium processing while you can because there's no telling the next time USCIS will temporarily suspend it. Premium processing, while not cheap, provides a guaranteed turnaround on your case if you're willing to pay the fee. For the full post on the H-1B Guy Examines, the history of premium processing, one of USCIS's primary revenue sources, please check out the h1bguy.com. I wanted to ask you tomorrow if you'll please join me at 1 p.m. Eastern for another episode of H-1B Guy Live unedited and unscripted Q&A 6. If you haven't already, I'd like to ask you to please like this video, please subscribe to the H1B Guy channel here on YouTube, and click the bell for notifications so that you're notified anytime we post a new video here to this channel. If you've made it this far, I just want to say thank you for taking the time to watch my content. I really appreciate your support. The H-1B Guy, your global source for all things H-1B.